to start talking about the writing process. Now, I've been a teacher for a little while now. Let's say I've been doing some type of version of this exact lecture multiple times a year for at least 11 years. Now, over the course of time, of course, the information has stayed the same, but the lecture changes a little bit every time. However, when we look at the writing process, that writing process stays the same. Now, my writing process might be slightly different from another person's. If you were to research the writing process, for instance, by going to YouTube, you might find different people talking about specifically what type of assignments. I know that when I was looking at this, I saw Quentin Tarantino's writing process, and he was talking specifically about creating a screenplay. Now, Quentin Tarantino, of course, is a screenwriter, an actor, a director, and producer. And if you know anything about Quentin Tarantino, he creates very interesting and odd things. You may know him from Kill Bill series. Another individual who talks about their writing process, and he has been very successful in it, is Stephen King. He is considered one of the most published and translated authors. Not only does he hold these two titles, but he also holds a title with the most money tied to an author. Now, if you look at him in any of the videos you see, Stephen King is our definitely our odd duck. He creates things from his mind that we would not necessarily see um, from other individuals. And he creates everything from short stories to novellas to full-length novels. And he definitely is in the horror, supernatural, and the thriller realm. And he has been very successful in this. Now, I went through and watched Quentin Tarantino and his process, Stephen King and his process. I also saw one that Maya Angelou talked about her process, and she is a very famous poet, okay, specifically in the African American literature, okay, and you might know Phenomenal Woman is one of the most quoted of her poems, and it is absolutely beautiful. Now, when I went through and compared all of these, I found some very major things in common. A lot of time was spent in the beginning, in the pre-process, pre meaning before. Now, with the videos that we've seen so far, we've seen different versions of what it means. I heard it called the creation process, okay, or the creation stage. I've heard it's the part for invention. Uh, I've heard it called pre-writing. Okay, I've heard it called the splash. I've heard people not name it anything and they just call it getting the ideas out. I've also heard it called as starting the flow. Now all of these come together and they tell us that this is the thing that happens before we actually write and start going along with what the assignment is. Now, I'm going to give you some ideas of what it means to do and engage in some pre-writing. 
we're going to talk about what are the stages and I'm going to call it all of these might have something different but I'm going to call it pre-writing and invention so when we see it in the writing process we want to make sure that we know that these are also correct but we're going to try and narrow it down so we have common language it's very important to be using the same vocabulary regardless of the fact that we could use different words. So we're going to start with the writing process and we're going to talk about how it is a process. When I like to talk about the writing process, I make sure that I include this according to the side of it. Okay, and that it is quite circular in nature. Okay, and it's considered this, and I write writing process some people refer to it as a cycle because of the fact that you may start at one point and go back through the steps because of various reasons now some reasons that you may have to go back through it is you may get to a point where you get stuck and you realize you just didn't come up with enough ideas, so you may have to go back to the beginning and go through the pre-writing. Or you may realize that your paper needs more work, so you have to edit it more. Or you finish your paper and you realize it doesn't quite meet the assignment standards, so you may have to go back and look at a rubric. So let's talk about each step. Now I'm not going to number the steps because I'm calling this a process and a cycle. And when we talk about numbers, we tend to think that they have to go in a certain order. Same thing when I want to do an outline and I label things with letters. I'm not going to label that in that way because it's a cycle. And we, kind to, we tend to go through it again and again. So our first step is going to be our pre-writing. Okay, we also can call this the invention stage. This is where we look at our topic, we examine that topic, and we come up with ideas based on that topic. We start to let our mind wander and figure out what do we already know about this topic? What might we need to research about this topic? What might we need to ask more questions about it? Maybe we need to narrow it down. Maybe we need to do a little bit of research to make sure we understand what we're talking about before we engage in it. The next step that I look at is the handwritten rough draft. Now, this is often referred to as the sloppy copy. Now, I am going to require, and I'm going to put this here because I find that this step is the most important of all the steps because individuals I have found want to skip this step and immediately go to the typing phase. I require that you do a handwritten rough draft if you do not engage in the writing process and, and keep a handwritten rough draft, None of the rest is going to count. I will not accept your final. Translation. If you do not do the handwritten rough draft, you fail the assignment. Because I will not give you a final score on your paper until you have engaged in the entire process. After we do the handwritten rough draft, this is where we go and we type it. 
Now, when we're doing typing, oftentimes we engage in some level of proofreading. We're having to read our writing over, and we're going to do a little level of proofreading and hopefully able to start catching the mistakes. Next, we need to read what we have, been, we have done. And we start with ourself. You should always reread what you have written before you give it to someone else. The next step, we can share it with a peer. Now, a peer means someone who is at a similar level. So this would be like another student in your class or perhaps another student in another class. This peer would not be your teacher. This peer would not be a parent. Now you start with the peer who's someone going to look at it that way. And then you can go up to the higher level of your than a peer. Someone who would you consider, I will call this the mentor. Read. This could be your parent. This could be your teacher. This could be an older brother or sister or cousin who's in college. Or perhaps a friend that has already graduated and is now taking college courses. Then you're going to go through the revising stage. You're going to find all of those errors and you're going to fix them. Now we're not just looking at things like the commas and making sure you didn't take care of spelling. We're also looking at content. Okay, so we're not just doing the proofread because that's the last thing we want to do. Okay, we have to look at content. Am I making sense? Is my argument sound? Do I have enough evidence? Now, after we do the content, then we do the proofread. At this point, we've probably already caught many of the big issues, but this is where we're gonna look for the commas on purpose. We've probably already caught some of the commas and the spelling up in here. So this is where we're really looking for the problems where we're trying to find out what's wrong. We're making sure that the commas are right, that the grammar is correct, that we don't have problems with tense, verb tense, that we don't have problems with noun or verb agreement, that everything is a nice, smooth flow to it. The last thing we're going to do is the final draft. Now, the reason why I end up having my final draft is because I run up against this bad boy, the due date. And I will keep working on a project and going over it and moving it up and down this list multiple times until I hit this due date, this deadline, which determines when do I have to be done with it and when do I have to turn it in. Now, the more times I move it through this, the more polished it is. Usually, the better it is. Now, oftentimes, I need to have time on my side. 
in order to do this. I need to have time for a peer to read it. I can't just hand it over and say, can you do this right now? Because it's due in an hour. I know that when students that I have that are now in college send me a paper, they often ask me to have it done within a week. That is something that you would like to do with people, is not give them a very short time to go through the process. So time. I oftentimes have to write that first draft, leave it alone, and then type it, and then leave it alone, and then edit it. Okay? This might require me to sleep on it. I oftentimes need to sleep on a paper or give myself some, some distance from it because otherwise I'm not willing to admit that I made some errors. Or I just don't see them. So we covered today the introduction to the writing process and what the writing process is. We're going to drill down into each section and talk about some things that we can work on, such as specifically we're going to talk about pre-writing techniques in the next videos. That will be continued um, in our next lesson 